Hello, my soccer universe. Well, the Premier League round last weekend was actually the first one to not feature any freak results per se. But fortunately, we got the Eredivisie in this video and I'm all Ajax again. I will talk about this very, very brief shortly because uh, that was probably the result of the weekend what Ajax produced. Um, also, note, thanks to the new Aston Villa jersey, I have now, you know, here a little bit Ajax and the rest here is all Premier League. I have one Ajax jersey here too. And there will be one more team coming, hopefully soonish. The guy still hasn't sent the stuff to make it even more um, uh, diverse here. So I'm actually quite happy with my Premier League break background already. So because of this very special result, I actually decided to switch the order around and we'll start in the Eredivisie. And I actually saw that game, uh, most of it. I joined it when it was 2-0, the Klassiker was at the same time. Um, but I, you know, I just finished with Atalanta and then kind of uh, pulled it on, maybe it was 2 or 3-0 or whatever I said. Uh, since I have to watch through the computer uh, now because my fire stick is broken, so I have to connect a TV tool to the computer. But the kids then might think the computer is something we can watch also. So I decided I put a second game on, and that seemed like the perfect game. I actually you know watch some Eredivisie. And while my full attention was on the Classico, I keep seeing oh, they're scoring, they're scoring. Oh, uh, 4 0 at half, okay. And then I uh, see a red card for Kum. I said, yeah, okay, Venlo, maybe they will hang on, but uh, floodgates opened. At that po point, I mean, Traore had already scored two goals. The other one's by Ekelenkamp, who scored the opener, assisted by Traore. And, of course, Tadic always gets on the score sheet. But then what happened with the 54th and the 65th? There were one, two, three, four, five goals scored, and it seemed like every shot went in. I mean, you looked and they were celebrating. You looked and they were celebrating. The defending oh, non-existent. And uh, what I personally liked is that this was kind of the, the stadium of Venlo. is a smaller one. You see like trees in the, in the, in the background. So there is a certain uh, romanticism to it as well. The onslaught continues. I mean, uh, Hünteler comes on. Um, he scores a penalty, scores then. Two minutes later, another goal. Then Martinez scores. Terrare scores his fifth. And it's 13 nil. I have, have to say, when it was 8 or 9 nil, I actually thought, yeah, this must be now towards the end. But then there was half an hour almost still to go, and I said, what? What? That cannot be. I mean, absolute utter destruction. This was the biggest win in Ajax history. The biggest win in Ajax history. Boy, were they frustrated from that loss to Liverpool. Uh, they really let it all out and to me, I mean, what this means now in the Champions League Tuesday evening, Atalanta against Ajax seems to be like one of those matches that is almost a must watch and will end in a nil-nil. And uh, to top it all off, it all went perfect for Ajax this round because all the other rivals dropped points. PSV lose to Vitesse. 2-1. Uh, Feyenoord at Loli Valwijk. 2-2. Ajax at Loli Den Haag. 2-2. I mean, if you're an Ajax fan, uh, I am, a bit, I, I, yeah, I'm not an all, ultra or whatever, but I mean, as an Ajax fan, this is just, uh, was the weekend, biggest win and all the others uh, lose or draw points, perfect. Uh, so in the standings now, through these 13 goals, the goal average went from like 2.9 now to over 3.1. I mean, this is unbelievable. So many goals scored. So yeah, uh, we have an Ajax and Vitesse level on points on top of the table. Vitesse, of course, having just uh, beaten PSV. But of course, goal difference is speaking for Ajax. Ajax made also a super jump in the rating. I think I, I have I have to scale from zero to 100. Uh, they were 75 and suddenly they are now at 80 on um, 538. Uh, unbelievable turn to, uh, to turn around and Venlo who just was now a little bit towards you know was kind of mid table for for now but very uh, was expected to be uh, just safe they their rating dropped so much they're almost the worst team, team in the league if you look now at the, at the mid table Venlo uh, has as many points as AZ who still have have have, have not won but whoop 
goal difference goes all the way down. They had level goal difference, you know, minus 13. This is just an unbelievable result. As I said, PSV barely hanging, uh, yeah, is, is still hanging there, uh, Feyenoord, but you know, it's all... A few week, weeks ago I said Ajax were the first ones to kind of crack, but now uh, the rest is cracking and it seems to be going all Ajax's way for now. Uh, the interesting thing is that Groningen, and I don't know if Arjen Rom is coming back, is playing uh, Wendler next, and Ajax gets another uh, bottom of the table team with Sittard, so maybe they will pile on uh, Feyenoord plays at Emmen, PSV against Den Haag, and as that uh, Wolvac uh, ends up the round. So yeah, unbelievable stuff in the Netherlands, biggest result that I can remember seeing. You know, when you get seven or eight of, of whatever teams usually, then at one point stop playing, but Ajax just did not, I mean, they just went all out. Unbelievable, I, I still cannot believe that. But let's go to the Premier League, because this was maybe the first Premier League round where you thought, oh yeah, this was actually, with everything that happened before, this was kind of a, a downer. I think of uh, overall 20 goals scored. I mean, Ajax scored 13 alone. The most remarkable... I mean, I, 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 actually, there were two remarkable results and they were happened first. I mean, Aston Villa against Leeds United. And I, I saw most of that game, although my daughter tried the best that I don't see much of it. Um, I have to say, first half for what I get, it was even. There was a huge chance by Grealish that was uh, cleared off the line by Ailing who then actually had this weird moment where he's having the ball and then steps on it, falls, but fortunately there was no one around and he could uh, go further. Uh, Bamford missed the chance, but I think it was a rather even game. Second half, I think initial Aston Villa was better and if Grealish was a little bit less selfish, he made this great solo run, but then I think, was it Trezeguet? game? Well, whoever was in it, he cuts in and then there's a clear passing route. He needs William. No, he continues running. He wants to get the wonderful goal, but to, to be honest, if he would pass the ball there, uh, that guy who was standing there, I think it was uh, Trezeg, but I might be completely wrong now, uh, has a free shot on goal. Uh, no, well, uh, you know, Trezeg or Watkins, one, one of those. But uh, would have had a clear shot, the goal and probably this would have been the 1-0. And that probably would, would have gotten the a game in Villa's favor. And so just a few minutes later, um, Bamford gets the breakthrough for uh, uh, for uh, Leeds United. Uh, and, you know, then there was a little uh, bust up with uh, Tyrone Minks and so on, a penalty which then did not uh, get, 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 get given. And, just a few minutes later from that, Bamford gets his second one, uh, which was a great shot from outside of the box. And at that point, there was no coming back. Back for Villa. Leeds, it, with their intense style, keep on going, keep on piling on to Villa over and over and over and over again. And they actually score a third one. Bamford gets, as we call it in German, Lupenreiner hat-trick, or purest of hat-tricks, because you score all the three goals in succession in one half. That's actually, this is how I was told was, uh, was, was the initial, when, when I grew up, this is actually the only way that you can score a hat-trick, uh, but then, you know, it gets extended. Uh, Leeds, pretty impressive, and can I mention again, I really like those Leeds away jerseys as well. And of course, I get an Aston Villa jersey because the costume was doing well, and the first, day, the first time they're playing, they, of course, lose their exalted position. Uh, surprising was also West Ham against Manchester City, uh, where Antonio's opener was probably the goal of the weekend. That, If you watch anything Premier League, that goal is well worth wa watching. The way he's with the back to the goal and then flicks it with his foot over his head, uh, really, really nicely taken goal. Maybe it takes a short deflection, but I, I heard about it, but... I, I watched it to get a, a, again as my couldn't really really see it, but overall it was you know Manchester City um, having most of the possession. But there's something uh, you know, it seems like the players cannot get Guardiola anymore, or, or there's some connection lost between uh, the part parties. Or, or people have figured out that Guardiola style, if you have a solid defense, you will be um, you will have uh, success. 
against him. I mean, he brings on Foden at the halftime, who scores prompt power from the goal. Then they have chances, but you know, there was also one for West Ham. And it overall ends in a rather disappointing 1-1. It's the first time that a Guardiola team does not win at West Ham. Uh, Crystal Palace 2-1 over Fulham, not much uh, said to be there. I actually saw also United-Chelsea. I actually saw, yeah, those, 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 those games I saw a little bit. Um, I think the longer it went on in the first half, the more Chelsea was in the game. And I think Pulisic had a good chance. Uh, second half, a similar story, uh, but I think both teams were more concerned, uh, pouring rain of course, uh, were more con 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 concerned with uh, staying solidly in defense and in the end it was a great rush for chance that could have found the breakthrough. Um, yes, Mondi actually was pretty good in goal for Chelsea, I have to say. and. They seemed a little bit more settled, but forgot a little bit going forward. And Harvard continues to be a little bit on the sloppy side still. But you know, it ends in nil. Chelsea has two clean sheets in, in a row. Unbe freaking livable. Um, Liverpool, Sheffield. I did not watch that per se. Uh, what was 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 watching in the evening uh, that day? I actually don't. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was war, 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 watching German Bundesliga highlights. Uh, that was a, a, actually a bit more of interest to me. Uh, but you know, I switched back before I saw that it was not really a penalty. Uh, VAR intervened, you know, they said if you give a foul, you have to give a penalty. But honestly, I didn't think it was a penalty. But Berger steps up and converts for Sheffield United, who played in dark green golden jerseys, which of course I did not have in my jersey review. Uh, it makes some wattish sense because it provides some contrast, but on the other side, get black ones. Sheffield, you can get black ones. I mean, this is a little bit like Monaco. Liverpool having probably a lot of possession and whatever, but uh, couldn't find a breakthrough until Firmino, you know, there was, uh, I think it was a Sané shot that then um, Firmino does, does stuff in, in the goal before the halftime. I was actually afraid that it might have been offside, but it was not. So the goal stands. Uh, Salah has an amazing goal. Uh, this, this is another 63rd. Um, and just a few, and then a minute later, Mane says, says of Jota uh, to get the lead for Liverpool. Then Salah even hits the post. The funny thing was all these instances that I'm uh, to tell now, I wasn't watching, but I flipped over and all these things happened right there. Then I said, okay, let's flip back. And then I flipped over, over again, but then it didn't uh, work in, in anymore. And I, I saw that at the end of the, of, of the game. I mean, Liverpool got a uh, workmanlike victory. Um, surprising result to me was Southampton Everton, where Everton, I think, was a little, from what I could gather from the highlights, was better at first, but then Ward Prowse and Adams, uh, all set up by Inks. Uh, get the get two goals for Southampton that turned the game and actually kind of um, demoralized Everton enough. Demoralized so much so that Dinia gets sent off for tripping. Um, probably a little bit harsh, but when you see how he steps on, yeah, it is rather rather dangerous. But not it was it was more by accident. But I think the rules cover that one. Newcastle gets a very lucky 1-1 one -one at Wolves. Um, Leicester uh, wins at Arsenal. Jamie Vardy again scoring against Arsenal. And Arsenal is really aggrieved that in the third minute they score a goal after a corner where offside was given. But if you watch it, uh, a goal is scored, but none of the people offside are actually touching the ball or even interfering with, with the goalkeeper. So it was kind of why is this goal uh, not given in a way? Um, the rest of the game, you know, I also saw bits and pieces, but from all I hear, it was not an entertaining or great game. But Leicester gets a big win. And then yesterday, have not seen much of it. Brighton 1 1 against West Brom, and Tottenham gets a, um, you know, Dirty victory, but they get the big victory through Son. It was important for them after the 3 3 uh, to also get, get in the league. And Son, I think, has scored now eight goals, as many as Arsenal. So I thought that, that was also an interesting little fact. Spurs, I honestly think that uh, if the league is going the way it's going, Spurs has a huge chance to do something big. 
this season. They seem to have a very, very complete squad with a very good coach. I'm not anointing them uh, favorites now, but I think they would be my dark horse to actually do something. So now in the current Premier League standings, uh, we have the two Liverpool teams up on top with 13. Um, right behind Aston Villa and Leicester, so two Midlands teams, and then is already Spurs lead Southampton Crystal Palace. You need to look long for uh, other London and Manchester teams. You know, we have Chelsea in 10th, Arsenal in 11th. You can choose Chelsea lost only once, but has as, as many points as Arsenal, who lost uh, three times. The Manchester teams in 13 and 15, but all having a game in hand, so they uh, at least Manchester City could have 11 and be right up top there with Spurs. United a uh, little bit below, I think, for adjusted. Um, if I would adjust by points av average, they would uh, jump at least to 10th um, spot, if not a little bit higher. Uh, we can actually they have minus one. Yeah, they will probably, probably be in ninth um, if they get that one win. Uh, the next round, I think, again, Manchester United has a place at home against a team from London. It's uh, United against Arsenal. Um, I'm looking around Villa Southampton. This is a tough opponent for Villa to kind of get back there. Spurs should actually do something against Brighton, but there's always an iffy matchup. Leeds against Leicester uh, sounds to be an interesting one. I don't like again that we have two Monday games, but so be it Liverpool plays against West Ham, Chelsea at Burnley. And that is my little review for the past Premier League at Eredivisie weekend. Again, 13 goals by Ajax. What more can you say? Drop a line below to tell me what you thought about all these games that I've been talking about. If you can add anything, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!